The Batman Brave and the Bold cartoon, a loving throwback to a more jokey and Silver Age Batman. Chock full of references, older versions of characters, and of course, team-ups. It's not exactly a series that would seem like a likely candidate for censorship for being too sexy, too much suggestion. And yet, that's what happened. I'm Sasha, this is Casually Comics, and today we're going to talk about the time that Batman the Brave and the Bold got a little bit too saucy for American TV. An episode where the innuendo just went a bit too hard. The episode in question was from Season 2, entitled The Mask of Matches Malone. Nice alliteration. And it first aired in 2011. The episode was written fittingly enough by Gail Simone. Why fittingly? Well, the entire episode features many nods to the superhero team Birds of Prey, which was an all-female team who had debuted in the mid-90s under Chuck Dixon. Gail Simone had written a long and well received by most fans run on the series. Simone wrote Birds of Prey initially from issue 56 to 108 in that first run. It's considered by most to be must-have reading for those who are fans of the team. This television episode would feature the team-up of Black Canary and Huntress along with Catwoman. Catwoman may seem like a surprising choice for some, but she featured a decent amount in the Dixon run. But it also makes sense given the plot of the episode. And it's always interesting to see some of the later, in quotes, comic ideas be incorporated into this series which had such a heavy emphasis on throwback energy. The Brave and the Bold comic series ran from 1955 to 1983, and was not an exclusively Batman team-up book at first, but became one after issue 74 in 1967, largely prompted by the success of the Batman TV series, leading to an increased interest in the Cape Crusader. So an episode like this Matches Malone one is marrying that history with the 90s Birds of Prey concept and more. The Birds of Prey references are carried throughout, and one of them is the fact that the song the ladies will sing that's gonna get this episode in a bit of trouble is called Birds of Prey. The premise of the main story, because Batman Brave and the Bold would have two segments, a short teaser one and then a main one, and off times the short teaser was unrelated. So the main plot of this episode was your classic amnesia slash mistaken identity plot. For this plot, we had Batman undercover as Matches Malone get one too many pesky knocks to the head. It's the special head knocks, the ones that befuddle you into thinking you're someone else, especially if you're undercover. Very a la Fred Flintstone. Batman will have to deal with the brain damage later. For now, he's Matches Malone. Matches Malone is another throwback. He debuted in 1972 in Batman 242. He was often seen lighting matches and would eventually be revealed to be an arsonist, hence the name. But but for the first appearance, he died in that, and Batman assumed his identity. And it's been a go-to undercover identity for the character since. He usually uses this identity to infiltrate organized crime operations, so it's a nice nod to see it here. For this episode, the plot is essentially the pursuit of Two-Face, who's stealing a magic cloak that he's trying to sell at auction. Catwoman is trying to steal this cloak, the cloak of Nefertiti. It was a gift to the goddess Bast that's supposed to give you nine lives, and she's got to stay on brand. She ends up fighting Batman, but Huntress and Black Canary also show up, but they're looking for Two-Face, and this results in everyone against Two-Face who ends up escaping with the cloak. Catwoman ends up attaching herself to the heroes because she has key information that will help them follow Two-Face, and so a plan is set to infiltrate the Double Decker Club. We get our ladies showing up in their civilian attire and a dress emergency. Ooh, same dress. Awkward. Huntress, don't be silly. There won't be any problem. After she changes. Hardly an option, dear. Besides, I wear it better. Two of them are wearing the same dress. Oh my word, who wore it better? Batman shows up his matches and tells them they have to be his bodyguards, Chick Squad. So far, so good. Nothing band worthy yet, unless you really don't like a Chick Squad. Although, there is some very sexy saxophone happening and some leading fighting with Batman and Catwoman. So it's not entirely tame, but still not at shut it down levels. However, you may disagree. Two Face is holding an auction for this cloak and it goes sideways. Mob double cross, big fight, knocks to the head and Batman thinks he's matches for real and just goes into it hard. He's gonna start a criminal empire. First step, this cloak. I mean, it gives you nine lives. What a stat buff. Matches takes refuge in the Iceberg Lounge and there's only one way to get in. Well, there were probably multiple ways, but one of the easier, more fun ways is to pretend to be an undercover singing group. It's a classic. In all fairness to this plan, they'd already busted in. It became part of the plan. We're very much cliff noting this episode. Match's crime spree is also pretty great. It's a fun episode to watch. You have to have musical skills to do this infiltration though. Thankfully, they all do. But if you're gonna be a singing group, you need a song. And this is where the Birds of Prey song comes in. It's a very tongue in cheek little number, one of those Reese K kind of suggestive body nightclub songs. I used so many synonyms in that sentence. It's very much poking jabs at some of the male heroes and talking about why the birds of prey can get it done better. Girls get it done. And also, I guess, lightly emasculate you. I'm a bit uncomfortable about the fact that Blue Beetle's in this song, given some of the rest of the content. He is canonically in this series in high school going into college. Here is some of the innuendo we're looking at. Flash's foes, they finish last. Too bad sometimes he's just too fast. No, it's not that one, nor is it the line with the jab about Green Arrow not shooting straight, which can be taken a couple of ways. It's the one that's sung by Huntress after Black Canary has her line about Aquaman, because Huntress is the one providing all the sass for this song. Aquaman's always courageous. His little 
little fish less outrageous. I, I understood that reference. Yes, yes. That was a small penis joke. So what pushed it over the edge, aside from the dots that can be connected? It was the animation featuring Huntress wagging her finger just to drive the part home. Just that wiggle. You have no question as to what's being discussed because you have that little visual cue. Well, that was beyond the pale. And this is where the history gets a little choppy. You have a couple of versions that are put out there as to what happened. They all end in the same result, so I'll just give you all of them. Clue style, here's how it could have happened. Some say this version of the episode never aired, and instead it was delayed so that this scene could be reanimated, and in place of having the finger wiggle, we would have a fish tank when she would sing this line. While other sources claim that it aired once, was then pulled, the reanimation occurred, and then this new version was one that was aired. Either way, you end up with the fish tank version going out to American viewers. Although it was subsequently also just not aired very often, Often or not aired because it made Cartoon Network uncomfortable. People probably complained. People will complain about anything, so I believe it. It was also not included initially in the season two DVD releases, and so it was included as an extra on the season three. But here's where things get even more intriguing. This banning, this kerfuffle, it was a US thing. The episode just aired other places around the world. Although they would start sending out the altered versions, so you'll see that too. Which did you see if you were watching while it was airing? I'm so intrigued. For me, fish tank. I mean, I guess now you have a choice if you want the finger wag version or the fish tank version. Either way, you're getting the same innuendo, but it's just how blatant do you want it? This is a very soft banning in that the original version is very easy to get a hold of, and it's not something that's really being pushed time for recording anymore. The fish tank version, that is. The original version was included as early as 2014 on the Blu-ray releases. It's been included on the YouTube WB Kids channel in compilations. It's the version that was on HBO Max, now just Max. Probably not there anymore because they've pulled so much content off of that time of recording. But the point is, it's not hard to track down the original version in the slightest. It might even be harder to find the fish tank these days. So that begs the question I want to toss out to you. Was this too much? Does this kind of suggestive reference make you uncomfortable given the fact that in context it's a kid's cartoon? Or is this one of those adult jokes, those ones for the adults that should maybe fly over the kids' heads and then years later they can see it and appreciate it or not? And if one does deem it inappropriate, does the same not go for for the whole song, because that's not the only suggestion in there. It's not the only wink, wink, nudge, nudge, know what I mean kind of moment, giggity. Now, such innuendo is not surprising coming from Gail Simone. She's no stranger to embracing a somewhat lowbrow Joker reference or just comment. In 2023, the year of this recording, she was tweeting about motorboating Power Girl. The way I phrased that was so odd. The year of this recording, 2023. AT after TikTok. Do you think that this was pearl clutching or do you think that it was an unnecessary moment in poor taste? On the whole, regardless of what you think about this particular moment, the Matches Blown episode is a lot of fun. It's nice to see these characters team up, you get a bit of a different focus from Batman, it's just got a very Silver Age vibe down to the very hokey ending. It's a good time overall and has an interesting history thanks to the controversy this moment briefly caused. So that was the time Batman Brave and the Bold got a little bit too sexy, a bit too suggestive. What are your thoughts? Put them down below, I want to hear them. Please do all the YouTube things, like, share, comment, subscribe, share some other moments of censorship you find interesting. I as always appreciate you taking some time today to spend it discussing comics or comics adjacent things with me, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.